Hi, and welcome to lesson six in our electron unit. Here we're gonna talk about our last way of representing electrons through what are called box diagrams. Again, here you see Carbon's box diagram up at the top. Let's talk about how this works and what they look like. So a box diagram is going to show individual electrons, which we're gonna represent as arrows. And we're gonna put those arrows into their specific orbitals, which we're gonna represent as boxes of each occupied sublevel in the atom. A maximum of two electrons can fit in an orbital as long as they have opposing spins. So you can think about an electron as spinning the same way that the Earth spins on its axis. And of course, there are two possible directions for spin, clockwise and counterclockwise. Let's take a moment and talk about this orbital concept. An orbital refers to a three-dimensional region of space around the nucleus where there's a high likelihood of finding an electron. Every orbital can fit a maximum of two electrons. So if we look at our sublevels from our last discussion and we consider how many total electrons could fit in each of those sublevels. You can then deduce the number of orbitals in each sublevel just by dividing the total number of electrons that can fit by two. So the S sublevel fits two electrons, it has one orbital. P fits six, it has three orbitals. D has five orbitals and F has seven orbitals. This information is given to you on a chart in your notes on page 13. So if you have any questions about that, you can always go back and compare in case you ever get confused. There are a couple of rules that we need to be conscious of when we are constructing box diagrams. The first is called the Pauli exclusion principle. And it states that an orbital can hold zero, one, or two electrons but that if there are two electrons in an orbital, they have to have opposite spins, which we'll represent in our box diagrams as an up arrow and a down arrow. So here's hydrogen's electron configuration. It has one electron in its S sublevel orbital. So it's got an up arrow in that box to represent its box notation. Here's helium. Helium has two total electrons. They're both going to be in the S sublevel of the first principal energy level. And so to represent that they're both in there, we've represented their different spins, one up and one down. It's convention to always start with up spins. So that's how we're gonna do it. It's always the way that you'll see it. If we look at lithium, lithium has three total electrons, two in the first principal energy level in that S sublevel, up and down. And then that third electron goes into the two S sublevel. And of course we start with S. Beryllium has four total electrons. So we've now filled the atom's two S orbital with an up arrow and a down arrow. And that brings us to boron, which has the same configuration as beryllium, but now with an additional electron occupying the first orbital in the two P sublevel. The convention here is always to start with the orbital closest to the left. The other rule that we need to be conscious of is Hund's rule, which states that electrons in orbitals of the same sublevel will always occupy empty orbitals before they pair up in an orbital together. We can see that if we continue to look at box diagrams for successive elements. So when last we left off, we had boron. If we go up one more, we're going to go to carbon. Notice that in carbon's box diagram, it's two electrons and it's two P sublevel are each in individual orbitals. That's Hund's rule. We wouldn't pair them up yet because there are empty available orbitals for unpaired electrons to occupy first. Let's continue this trend and look at the last four elements in period two and see what their box diagrams look like. If you want to, take a moment, pause the video, try it on your own, and then when you're ready, we'll go through and look at it together. So nitrogen is going to continue the trend that we saw with carbon. We're going to put that fifth, second principal energy level electron into the open P orbital by itself. Once we've done that, we now start pairing up. The next would be oxygen. And since oxygen represents our first paired electron, we're gonna put that electron as a down pointing arrow in the leftmost box in the P sublevel. Fluorine is going to have two pairs of electrons, the leftmost and the center box. And then neon is going to have every orbital filled in the first two principal energy levels. Does this make sense? If it doesn't, take a moment and write down any questions that you have. And then when you're ready, we'll move on. So a good question is, why do we care about box notation? And box notation turns out to be really useful for helping us see the unpaired electrons in an atom. For instance, nitrogen has three unpaired electrons. Unpaired electrons are typically the electrons that are involved in chemical bonds. So nitrogen, for instance, can form up to three chemical bonds with other atoms in order to exchange electrons to fill their valence. We'll talk a lot more about that in our next unit. Thanks so much for watching our discussion of box notation. Make sure that you can do the following things here at the end. Make sure that you can represent an atom's electron configuration as a box diagram. If I give you any element on the periodic table, you should be able to figure out what its electron configuration is going to look like on, as a box diagram, particularly if that element's in the first, let's say, four periods of the periodic table. Also make sure that you can use a box diagram to determine how many principal energy levels, sublevels, and orbitals of an atom are occupied with electrons and how many are filled with electrons. And finally, make sure that you can identify valid and invalid box diagrams. 
If you can do each of those things, you're doing great. If not, that's okay too. Take a moment and write down any questions that you have. You can always leave them in the comments below the video or get in touch with me through the information in the info field. Thanks again for watching. I really appreciate it. Have a great day.